It may have been breakfast time, but there was still music on the streets in Clonmel as the first of an estimated expected crowd of 150,000 people began arriving for their annual feast of music and crack. This is the second year in succession in which Clonmel won out against stiff competition from other towns who wanted to stage the event, which will see some £7 million pushed across various counters and into the local economy. Financially, it's a major boost to a town like Clonmel that has lost a couple of industry in the last couple of years. It's uh, in, it works out in the region of about six to seven million pounds to a town. Uh, the size of Clanmel, it, it's, it's a tremendous boost. For some more than others, it's a serious business with four and a half thousand musicians taking part in competitions. And the whole event is attracting people from as far away as Japan, Australia, America, and of course from the continent. It's possibly among one of the premier art forms at the moment. And I think one of the main reasons for that is that young people did take an interest. So you have a whole new body of musicians coming along as well. I think what's most important, of course, is that it's so well accepted abroad. And there are thousands of people now coming to Ireland to hear Irish music and indeed to learn Irish music as well. As the musicians arrived today, the president of Colthus Kiltori Aaron, Dermot O'Cohon, spoke of our true undiluted music handed down through the generations. We were not prepared to place it in a melting pot to produce a cultural mix, he said. That was anathema to all true Irish people. And while the official flower is supposed to run from today until Sunday, they say it really began a week ago and it will run for another week. We got three hours sleep last year. We're uh, hoping to do a little bit better this year. We are a little bit more organised. So hopefully uh, we will uh, have plenty of crack, plenty of fun and plenty of competitions.